Hey there, physics fans. We have a projectile motion problem for you here, and it's number 14 off the homework, and it has this very same picture with it. And this particular problem, well, it's, it's challenging. It's a little complex. We have some information that I'd like to highlight for you. First off, um, the quarterback's hands uh, are 1.5 meters from the ground, as is the other person. So you see these two things that I highlight in, in red, they're extra information. They don't matter. So we can sort of discount those, right? Um, other things that are more important, I suppose, are the angle through which it's thrown, the speed with which it's thrown, and the fact that this receiver is 10 meters away. What are we really looking for? The velocity that this guy here needs to travel in order to end up where the football will will eventually end be. So this is going to work similar to other problems we've done in the past. We have two different vectors. First off, we have something that goes up, right? And that's going to have a y component. And it's going to have an x component. And the x component is the adjacent of the angle. And the y component is the opposite. So to find vx, we're going to say, well, that's the cosine of the angle, which is 25 degrees. And we're going to multiply that times the magnitude, which is 15 meters per second. And when we do that mathematics out, we get 13.6. And to find the y component, we use sine. So vy equals the sine of 25 degrees times 15 meters per second. And that value comes up to 6.3. Now, as you've probably remember from previous discussions, the y component is going to get us the time. The x will get us the horizontal distance. So I'm going to use this y component, and our 6.3 meters per second is our initial velocity up. Now our velocity is going to go up. It's going to have a vf at the pinnacle of the motion of zero, and then it's going to go back down. And so we're going to find half that journey using 6.3 as an initial velocity. And so we will say vf equals vi plus a delta t. And we can solve this for time. And that'll lead to 0 minus 6.3 meters per second all over the acceleration of gravity, which is negative 9.8. This is going to afford us half the time, which comes out to 0 0.68 seconds. And I'm going to multiply that times 2. And the reason I'm going to multiply that times 2 is that's going to get us twice the value. We multiply 0 0.68 times 2, and we get 1.36. So we have the journey up and the journey back down. And we get a total time with this is what we get. Now this time is going to be used in the x direction. So I'm going to switch to green, and we're going to work in the x direction. With this time, how far from the person that tosses the football does it end up? In other words, how far right here do we end up? And if we have a time, we can say change in distance equals velocity times change in time. And the velocity is 6.3 is 13.6 meters per second. Now let's multiply that times the time for the up and down direction, which is 1.36 seconds. And that's going to get us our total horizontal distance, which is 18.5 meters. Now let's look take a look at our buddy over here. This person's already 10 meters from the other individual. So we can subtract 10 from this to end up with 8.5. And so our velocity will equal the change in distance, 
over the change in time. And we know that this person has 8.5 more meters to travel, and they still have 1.36 seconds to do it. And so we say, say 8.5 meters over 1.36 seconds. This will get us the velocity that the person must travel. Let's put it up here, and it's 6.3. And there's our final answer. Hope you enjoyed.